All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott, Information Technology Instructor at Rankin Technical College. And again, I'm going through a series of video presentations that I'm doing for the Rankin Technical College AWD, or Application and Website Development 1111.NET Framework with Web Databases class. Rather than starting with our textbook, I've decided to go through this 12 lesson uh, series from .netodyssey.com that's called ASP.NET MVC5 Free Course. So far I've gone through an explanation of what these lessons were and I've done chapter or lesson one which brings us to lesson two where we will build our first ASP.NET MVC application. The author walks you through this slowly and even though it is 11 pages in length, what you'll find is several of those pages, as we go through here, are just pictures of what the screens will look like. All right? And again, even if it doesn't totally make sense right now, that is okay. All right? I just want you to realize that. So again, this is the beginning of Part 2, Lesson 2, Chapter 2, whatever you want to call it which is your first ASP.NET MVC application. So it says we're going to create mini internet movie database, <clears throat> kind of pattern after IMDB. So we're going to fire up Visual Studio 2017, all right, the community edition, and then we're going to follow the steps. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's take it from the top and start Visual Studio up. Once it comes up, this is our start page. We can either come in here and do a new project from here, or, and I prefer to do this, I can't really tell you why, but I've just always done it this way, and that is close this and do a file, new, project. All right, what we want to do here is we want to choose web and we want to choose ASP.NET web application.NET framework. We don't want the core. The core is the newest stuff. All right, so that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to jump back and forth between the handout here and what we're doing. So that kind of showed you where we were. All right, again, ASP.NET web application and choose web there. All right. Now they want us to select the empty template and they want us to call this, it looks like, Hello World V1. Just fine. All right. So we selected that. We want Hello World. Don't put blank spaces in here. It's just much better if you don't. And also, you know, browse and set this to where you want it to go. I'm just going to put this right onto my desktop. All right. So that's the folder. All right. So it's saying it's going to save it to my desktop. Now, one thing that confuses people at times is the name. This is the name of your project. This is the name of your solution. All right? A solution can contain several projects. Okay? Ours, of course, won't because it's the first one we're doing. So we can leave this the same thing, the same name, but I'm just going to call this MVC Demo 1. So that'll be the name of our solution. The project will be called Hello World V1. Uh, I'm going to create a solution, but I'm not going to worry about Git right now. All right, so I'm just going to uncheck that and click OK. That brings us to right here, which is the new ASP.NET web application dialog. And to be honest with you, in this class, the only two things in here we're going to be concerned with are empty, and MVC. 
I don't think we're going to do anything with web forms in here. And we're not, at least not for a while, we're not going to do any web API. We may get to that stuff later. All right. But for let's just put it this way. For virtually, the, or at least the great majority of what we do, it will either be MVC or empty. Now, what we're told to do in here is to select the empty template. As it says, this will not generate any code for us. As this is the learning phase, it's better to manually code some of the stuff. Okay? Yeah. As they say, a good mechanic knows how each of the parts of the car works. I want you to be a great mechanic. All right? So what we will do is we will come in here. We will select empty, but we'll make sure we've checked MVC, which means we want it to create some blank or empty folders for us. Also notice that if we click MVC, we can change our authentication. Right now there's none, but we can change it to individual user accounts, worker school accounts, and Windows authentication. However, if we change this to empty, that gets grayed out, even if we do choose MVC here. And we're not going to worry about user tests, and we won't do anything with Docker, all right, to my knowledge. So I'm just going to click OK. The magic is happening, and if you look over in our Solution Explorer here, you'll see in just a matter of moments, there will be some stuff that's going to get built for us. Remember, this is a model view controller project. Why am I telling you that? Because notice we have a folder named models, we have a folder named views, and we have a folder named controllers, MVC. All right? This is a bare bones type of project. In fact, if we try to run this, you'll notice in here, we have only one file that's in views. It's called web config. If I try to run this file right now, the program is actually looking for a special type of HTML file called the .cshtml file. I don't have any of those. So if I come through here and try to run this by just clicking the, the little green arrow here, all right, I should get an error message because it doesn't have the requisite file that it needs to begin running the application. All right, so I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to get an error message right here when this comes up. And that's totally fine. What this will do is it'll actually bring up an internal server that's built into Visual Studio, for lack of better words, and it'll start running it on a random port. So, let's see. Not sure where exactly it'll start it, but there's the error we get. The resource cannot be found. It's just trying to run it, and it doesn't know what to run. All right? And again, that's totally fine. Always make sure after you get done with the run, if you don't want it to still be running, click the kind of red or maroon square right there that says stop debugging. All right, now we're back where we were before. Again, to quickly look at this, all right, this is our solution. Remember, we named our solution MVC Demo 1, and we named our project Hello World V01. So they're two different names. If you don't change them, they'll have the same name by default. All right, we'll talk later about things like properties and references. App data is where you can put your databases, your data stores. App start right now has got a single file in it called route config. All right, and typically there will be more files in it than that, but it says how you want things, the routing to go, how you get from point A to point B, whatever you want to call it. All right. Controllers are, again, going to hold our controller files. Models are model files. Views are view files. For now, we won't worry at all about the global.asax, the package.config, or the web.config. Some of that will come into play later on, okay? But for right now, we're, we're fine without it, without talking about it, I should say. All right. 
So jumping back in here, we've done all this. I selected empty and I selected MVC, which meant again, we could not work with authentication. We did not choose it to add any user tests. So it says you will get a folder structure like what is shown below. All right. We have no code generated for us except the config files. So if you try to run it now, you get the resource not found error. I already showed you that. So this is what we had. All right. It says below is the request flow in the ASP.NET MVC application that we discussed in the last chapter. There is one change in the flow. I've added action blocks in the controller. The controller by itself, by default, won't do anything. The controller has to basically, all right, have actions. As I told you before, how a good supervisor knows how to delegate authority to the right people working underneath him or underneath her. All right, in much the same way, the controller can call the correct action to do the correct job. All right. So the request came in, okay, based on the URL pattern, as it says, this is kind of where we are now. The routing engine will select which controller to call, and the controller will talk to the model eventually. All right. So as it says here, technically, action is the method in the controller class that performs some specific functionality. When we start working with databases, okay, <clears throat> we might have like an add record to add a new record to our database, a delete record to delete a record from our database, an update record. Hopefully you get the idea. <clears throat> it says now we're going to discuss how each of these blocks or steps works in our new application, and we're going to get into them in more depth and breadth of coverage in later chapters. So again, the user accesses the web page by typing in a URL. If you type in <clears throat> HTTP colon slash slash localhost, all right, basically you're saying run it on your own machine, okay? But the request reaches the routing engine of the ASP.NET model view controller, and it has to figure out based on that route config that we looked at, but not really where to go says there are a lot of things that happen in this step, such as receiving the request at the web server, forwarding the request to ASP.NET, and a few other things. But virtually all of it happens without us having to do anything. All right. The routing engine then selects the appropriate controller. Well, if you look right now at our example, it's kind of hard to do because we have nothing in our controllers folder. So... This is the routing engine, but there are no controllers from which to choose from. This is the code that is in that routing engine. All right? I don't want to confuse you with any of it, but the key thing is what's in here. And what it's saying is, if we don't give it any other information, it's going to call the home controller and the index action of the home controller, okay? But they do explain some of the rest of the stuff in here. <clears throat> it says the first state method has just two statements. First statement says MVC should ignore the route with an AXD, and then the name, the URL, etc. the stuff I just told you about, all right? So it says, let's see some examples. I have promised I would keep these down to 15 minutes or less. I'm at 14 and a half minutes, so I will pick this up in just a couple minutes.